Hello and welcome to another Kerbal Space Exploration episode. And in this episode we send something big up into orbit. This will be our Minimus station, our orbital research center, fueling station and Kerbal living quarters around Minimus. And I just have to apologize for my voice. I think I'm about to lose my voice or at least I have my throat is really hurting so I have a big glass of water and I will try to see if I can th talk through this whole thing but yes uh, this uh, rocket or station I did not think would be easy to get into orbit and get to Minimus but it actually worked on the first try even though those uh, rocket engines got really close and I was really certain that this whole thing would explode now but yes, it works on the first attempt, but I forgot a couple of pieces, so I had to go back and send it back into orbit one more time. But everything worked perfectly on both attempts, and I was amazed that I did not have to do any cal calculations or rebuilding or anything. So the biggest thing I sent into orbit this whole episode has been one of the easiest. Who would have thought that? But yeah, doing our orbit to Minmus, it's just normal uh, boring burn so we skip until we get to Minmus and we do our inclination changes and everything and I do apologize that nothing will be sped up today because uh, I recorded this whole thing a little late and I really want to go to bed now and uh, when I do the fast forwarding or speed up of the movie it takes a couple of hours for the computer to do all the changes and sp up speeding up usually so it uh, I want to go to bed about now and not in two hours so I, p I apologize but I have cut it down so it doesn't take five hours to watch I think the recording time is three and a half hours that I've cut down to 20 minutes but yes, we are now around Minmus and our station is pointing north and we deploy our solar panels and get a nice view as the station comes around Minmus. And we see Kerbin and the moon in the background with the solar panels extended. And I think this station looks very good and there is no lag whatsoever. The next thing we send up is our space train. This will be uh, our spacecraft that pulls stuff from Kerbin to Minmus we will just connect a bunch of stuff to the back of it and it will pull pull a lot of weight and probably a lot of fuel back and forth or empty fuel tanks to Minmus and full fuel tanks hopefully back to Min uh, Kerbin and it has four nuclear engines pointing a little bit out so we don't uh, burn up our precious cargo that we have on the back but um, getting into orbit detaching and unlocking the gimbals since when I did the launch it was kind of difficult to control with all the gimbling on at the same time now doing this rendezvous with Kronos was really difficult and I could not understand why for a long while and I had to go back after recording this to look at what is making Kronos keep turning like you see now. It just keeps spinning around all the time. And uh, I was using mechanical jeb to stabilize it and try to keep it in place. But I had forgotten an advanced SAS on this thing. So um, the mechanical jeb doesn't work when you switch craft while the advanced SAS will keep your spacecraft in place. But I got that fixed uh, later in this episode by well mostly in, in the first place the um, space train has an advanced SAS so it uses that for the rest of the docking in this episode so yeah I'm getting pretty frustrated with the station just keep turning around I cut away about half an hour I think of trying to rendezvous with this thing and at one point I had to go away and actually get some food because I was getting so hungry and impatient of waiting for this 
but I detached the dragon capsule and it made the whole thing a little bit more stable because it didn't turn around the dragon capsule and um, after a while I eventually get it in and you can see we have a little bit less lag now but there is some lag and I don't know why because this isn't a really big station but I think the docking ports having a lot of docking ports makes uh, a lot more lag so if we sent this up in like two or three pieces it would probably be a lot better so we'll try that the next time we build a station we'll do something like the minma station for the next carbon station maybe it can be bigger that way if we just send up two huge pieces and put them together so yeah I finally get it on and you can see it takes forever to actually dock it even though it's so close but yes it's there in the end and we can now finally straighten it up and we used advanced SAS of the um, train to keep it in place for the rest of the rendezvous so the next thing now is the dragon capsule we send it up uh, with the new crew members and it's a fully loaded dragon capsule this time because we are sending uh, the first research team to Minma station as well so we want to keep both stations uh, full of crew members uh, and with the new dragon update uh, we have gotten the payload and solar panel uh, module on the back and it looks really beautiful and seeing those solar panels extend and turn around and I do apologize for not getting a better camera shot of this because I have been doing uh, re-entries and solar panel and everything with this capsule the last couple of days now because it looks very very nice with the new capsule so yes just approaching the station and luckily the dragon capsule has lights so we can see where we're docking in the night time and it it's very easy to dock it's so well balanced and uh, everything works perfectly for this docking and after we dock this we are gonna prepare to send our kerbals to Minmus but before we can send them to Minmus we need a space bus so we send our space bus up into orbit and this space bus will uh, hopefully never land or crash into the ground it is supposed to be a orbital spacecraft it will always be in orbit or in sp yeah in space um, but we might do some uh, aero braking with the cool new uh, re-entry effects with that would look nice coming back to Kerbin with re-entry effects on the whole space bus but yes we get a good view as the station is coming up behind us and we see the moon and the bus is preparing to enter and it's not very easy to see but we just deduct from the engine and go towards our station <coughs> and uh, the new dark side of the planets or night sides they are really really dark and I th just love it. it it makes it so more much more realistic and I also have to start remembering to put lights on things so I can find my way but luckily we get sunlight and we do this rendezvous and docking in daytime in the end so getting pretty close to the space station and if you look very carefully you will see that one of the solar panels on the space station is gone and I really do not have any idea when that happened or why it happened because I have not I have not hit this uh, solar panel and um, I haven't I saved and when I got back the solar panel was gone and uh, the space tug is now malfunctioning all the time I don't know if that's the update or what but I decided we deorbit it and get rid of it because I'm 
sick and tired of it and we really don't need it anymore because we built the station and most of the parts we need now have RCS and the capability of flying themselves. But we bring this very close to the station and it takes a bit of a while, I do it very carefully, I don't want to hit the solar panel, the remaining solar panel on the other side and <coughs> I'm still not trusting the station 100% after it kept turning around on me with the train but I find out that the SES does the job nicely and this whole thing works and the docking is perfect on first attempt so I was really really happy and I had cooled down plenty now after the frustrating aff uh, affair with the train so we send some of the kerbals over to the bus and you can now see the lag I usually live with when I've sped things up for you so yeah that's how much it actually lags and I'm really sorry about my voice but I think I'm probably about to lose it now so hopefully I can hold out the last couple of minutes in this video but yeah, we fill up the space bus and um, uh, we send, I was going to send six Kerbals, but I apparently cannot count, so it turns out to be seven in total. So, oh yeah, it will work anyway. And um, yes, I think when you have all these docking ports, it t uh, gives more lag, but... Yeah, I talked about that earlier now, so we'll just skip that and continue to send Kerbals on board the bus. I don't uh, record all the Kerbals, I just <coughs> took out some of them to show that we sent them. And apparently the ones upside down gave me a little bit of headache because they kept flying around in weird sp places when I turned the RCS on. And being such a tight spot, it kind of... I was kind of scared I would knock off another solo panel. But the bus is filled up and uh, turning around to the point away from the station and doing a slow a slow burn away from the station uh, and uh, yeah to get away from the station before we do the big burn. Uh, we don't want to burn up the space station that would be bad. And you can see that my bus has a docking port underneath too. And I thought that if we have some small payloads, uh, nothing big, we can put that underneath the bus. Or if we need more docking, uh, more docking space on the Minmus station while the bus is docked, it can be a temporary dock there. But we can see the station flying away with the sun in the background and Kerbin roaring across uh, the sky in the background. So yeah, bus is approaching our burn point and I'm using the orbital uh, maneuver uh, from, uh, from mechanical jet, sorry brain stopped working uh, not to use it because I have had some mixed experience with it but to see when I should do my burn and after some small inclination changes we eventually get an encounter with with uh, Minmus <clears throat> so yeah I had originally thought that going to Minmus would uh, be more fuel efficient but after thinking about it with the inclination changes and everything I really don't think going to Minmus is more fuel efficient than going to the moon and we'll see if we stay at Minmus but I think we will because I have not done a lot of stuff on Minmus uh, mostly my uh, before I started the YouTube channel, I was concentrating on the moon and other planets farther away. And so far in the uh, episodes I have made, we've been to the moon with satellites, with landing uh, drones, with Kerbals and everything. So I think Minmus deserves a chance to get some 
uh, attention now because Minimus looks really good and there's plenty of Keith in there. So if we find a nice landing spot where we can build a space, our base, I think we will stay at Minimus. But anyway, uh, I have, I'm planning to build everything so in, if we want to move, we can just uh, send it back into orbit around Minimus, connect it to the station and fly it away. But I don't think we will. Because, as I said, I think Mimis will do fine. So yeah, we approach on the wrong side of Mimis, or we get an encounter that will slingshot us in the wrong direction. We will go towards the space station, and I am not having... I don't have enough thrust, and I'm not good enough to dock something that is going a couple of hundred meters per second in the opposite direction. So with a difference in velocity of about five or six hundred meters per second, that is pretty difficult to dock. I think it most likely would explode. So we push it onto the other side, and we get a nice encounter, and we do our <coughs> orbital uh, maneuvering to get an orbit around Minmus at around a hundred thousand meters, as is the same altitude of the space station. Mm. And I forgot to say this earlier, but I decided to name my Minimus Station Zeus, since that is the next god in line after Kronos. And um, I think uh, we'll just continue the line down through the Greek gods on our names. But I, I discovered one thing. Uh, docking here. I well, two things actually. I one thing as was that I was a lot closer to the station than I thought, so I almost hit the solar panel, and that would be bad. So, after a little panic attack, I pull myself a little bit back and get into position and dock. But originally, I was, uh, or yeah, uh, originally I was going to send. Um, bus on top, set the bus on top of the station where you can see the probe part but I haven't attached an other control part to the station yet so if we did uh, detach the probe and crash it into Minmus we, the station would be classified as debris and we do not want it to be classified as debris so for now we dock the bus uh, to the front port and I think it will work fine actually it it looks like it's gonna keep the balance about right it you you will see it starts turning a little bit but it it's it's gonna be fine and these seven four Kerbal uh, seven first Kerbals I apologize I'm really tired now and my voice is giving me such troubles but the f uh, seven first Kerbals are going to study the data we have gotten from our satellite, finding the best spot to send down our first uh, rover missions. And uh, we want to find a keythane deposit close to the equator, so it will be easier to get back and forth between the station and Minmus the ground, because we are going to shuttle a lot of fuel back and forth between this station and Minmus. No, yes, Minmus, and uh, whatever we call the Minmus station. So we now have uh, seven Kerbals to enter the station, and I'm just going to show you two. This was how most of them went, but this Kerbal decided to go for a spin, quite literal, and he did not want to go inside at first, but eventually he listens to my orders and goes back in. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, I apologize for my voice and that I'm a little tired. If there is any questions, please leave a comment, uh, please like and subscribe the movie, Wearing Storm, signing off.